Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Hey guys, welcome back to Sekiro, the ultimate guide, and today it is Ashina Reservoir. Now, this is, uh, this is going to be a very important part for a lot of people because um, there exists a boss in this area that is just so, so difficult. But before we do that, we are then going to do the boss that we missed out in the Ashina Castle part of the game. Because now, you've gotten as many upgrades as you're going to have at this point. So, you might as well just get this fucking guy done. Um, now, what you want to do is, well, try to elegantly get onto the roof here. But there exists like an amount of gunmen in front of this guy and he's kind of speaking to them. So if you upgrade the shuriken as well, uh, it's, so it's also good for this part. If the shuriken's upgraded, um, it means that you only need two shurikens to kill one gunman, which then nets you an among a bunch of other shurikens to actually deal with the boss with. However, we're also going to use Fistful of Ash as like a compensator for having less emblems. And that pretty much takes care of the boss. So we shuriken these guys and then we run away. Uh, let the boss um, reset. Yep, and that will. Um, I think if you, you could quit. Yeah, you probably could quit out and reload if you wanted. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, oh, for some reason, his aggro just—he wasn't alerted to you. He just knew that his men were being killed. Does the shuriken be silent? <laughs> cool. Uh, well, as long as he's not aggro to you, you can just do that. Just like the pee and pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you can see, the axe is putting in some solid work into this guy. And then, and then this full of ash when he uses is unblockable. Uh, yeah. Um, again, so this guy is pretty much like the, the other two guys of his, like, type, the kind of basic general. Um, I feel maybe a little bit bad for not going into a bit more detail about how to beat him. Well, you just, um, axe, fang and blade, fist full of ash. Axe, fang and blade, fistful of ash. That's all yeah. you did, and then his posture was full. So I guess the good thing about Sekiro is, unlike the Dark Souls guides where your build can very much differ, um, there's just straight up like an optimum path through the game that yeah, we're taking. Yeah, there's no variety in this game. So, so. you're always going to be able to do what you see us do. So that's yeah. actually like a, a big plus side to In terms of making game. a guide, yes. In terms of lifespan of the game, no. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> yeah. So here we are at the reservoir. Now, presumably, you're having an issue with this area. You've heard of reservoir dogs. Well, now you're about to get reservoir wolf. <laughs> What the, what does that even mean? That's what Sekiro means. One arm wolf. Oh fuck yeah, you're right. Jesus. Okay, that does. I've been actually. hitting it with all these wolf jokes since like part one, and you've just been completely clueless. <laughs> Why did you laugh when it was like you've heard of a uh, you've heard of a fox in the chicken coop? Well, what about a wolf in the cock house? Uh, like, it just sounded funny. Oh. Because okay. you're you're up you're up in the stakes on both levels. I'm just like you've missed the second layer to all of these jokes for the entire time I've been doing them, man. Just so, shocking. Sorry. So I just hope that like when we were bantering in certain parts, you can just kind of see what we're doing and it doesn't need like a very specific, um, you know, uh, commentary over it. But so this part here is the part that in the very first part you can shimmy along the wall and then come around the edge. Now you want to do that in this part so you can backstab these guys so they're like less of an issue to deal with. So just kind of bear that in mind. Um, 
Just and then you know it allows you to just kill these guys, pick up the enemies, pick up the items, not pick up the enemies. Um, Money. Yeah. And upgrade mats. Not bad. Yeah, it's worthwhile doing this. And then you can just drop attack him and pick up the literally irrelevant useless item. And then just go back to the bonfire, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, that was all we came here for. <laughs> so, there's like a certain... Again, this is one of those things where I've spent many an hour working out a nice optimum route for you guys, so you don't need to be tearing your hair out when you come to this part of the game. So again, like the video, if it was helpful, please. But it will be helpful. One like for each dog shuriken. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can... Go on this branch, which then allows you to like repel onto this bit, and then you come up onto this wall here, and it allows you to then use a shuriken on the stupid pan handler fuck, and then that means that when he sees you, he doesn't fucking alert every guy at your position. So I think this was like the intended route or whatever. So you backstab this guy, and then you want to like make sure you have the gatehouse key if you want to go in there to pick up the spear, yeah. which you get. As long as you kill those uh, two guys on the bridge to the dungeon, you'll have the gatehouse key. Yeah. So again, just kind of doing what you see us do, backstab this guy, uh, just attempt to not get caught, but taking this route, you should be totally fine. So now we are going to go into the hut, use the key, and uh, get the items. Now, the only thing that's ever really going to give you like a little bit of an issue is dealing with the two patrol and tarot guys. Like the, the big guys. Ones with the bell and the big stick. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, they're, they're not. Like, it's not that big of an issue. You don't, you don't even really need to deal with them. You can just run away from them. You can also like take a Gatchins, but at this point, it's like super unnecessary. So. Anyway, though, there's the Gyo's Broken Horn, which is easily the least useful. Uh, no, actually, it's the second least useful of all the... Um, the tools. But you get to pull the wiggly out of the gorilla boss later. So this is true, it, do, it does have a very specific application, but you It has a singular application. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we do use it one other time, even though it's totally unnecessary. So we take the Fistful of Ash, then we can backstab this guy, and that's like the last of the guys done in one very nice, neat little package that is going to save you some time. Now, hide behind this wall and make sure the tarot's like line up in terms of patrols, so they're both facing away. Then you backstab this one quickly before the other one turns round, and then you can come back here and hide behind the rock, and then time your run up to kill this guy as well. And then the only enemy left in this area is seven spears. And there's actually one other guy just hiding what? behind that corner there. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like super irrelevant. Like he's like basically never comes out. I don't think he even clocked into work the day. He just showed up to <laughs> stare and Blair Witch in the fucking corner. Yeah, it's just another guy staring at the wall. He fucking loved doing it, man. It's constant Blair Witching. Okay, then. Just leave them. So, right. we pick up uh, this pellet item, and uh, that should be that. Is this you now? Go are you going to fight seven spears by Yeah. Now, I don't think any other guide shows you how to beat this guy in quite this way. Now, admittedly, I did get this off, uh, like, one line that is overlookable on the Sekiro wiki. But, so far, of all the guides that I looked video-wise, nobody was shown this. So, I'm really hoping this is useful for you guys, because, uh, so many is just like, Oh, well, if you jump on his head 57 times, then you can kill him. But if you fuck up once, you die, right? But this, you don't need to fuck, it doesn't, you can't fuck up. It's impossible. You just kill him in one combo. So, <laughs> and you've never seen this before, have you? No, I have seen this. Okay, okay. I have seen this. So, if you want to just make sure you don't die, uh, equip the axe, make sure you've got fang and blade, and... Um, First full of ash. Nope. You just backstab him, and then literally press R2, R1, until he dies. Oh, do you not even need the first full of ash anymore? Nope. Okay. Uh, so, because what it is, is that his recovery animations are so long, it allows you to wind up an axe hit. Uh, sometimes he might do a more strong one, but ultimately you're able to put in enough hits and you've got enough hyper armor using the axe, and it's that easy. And you, you only lost half a HP bar tanking. Tanking his hits. Just simply because the hits that you do to him are so heavy that it, it then puts him, like, clearly his AI only has, like, a number of, like, if he's staggered, either do the recovery animation or do, like, a small retaliatory attack, and he doesn't do anything big, really. You can take an Ungo Sugar and an Akko Sugar just to absolutely make sure, but ultimately, 
that's it's that easy and then when i realized that you can do that to him i was like well can you do that to other enemies and uh yeah pretty much so now you basically don't need to watch the rest of the guide but also definitely do that um but that's uh you're just stunned, stunned silence from you. There's just nothing more to say. That's that's just how you're going to play the game from now on forever, and it's wrong. <laughs> it's not the way you should play. The well, game. maybe they should have designed. You the should game learn better. how to deflect. You should use different tools. The axe isn't the only tool in the game, but it's the only tool that you need in the game. So, oh, but look, there's some bosses that you absolutely need to deflect. So. Yeah, you say that, but I'm sure there's a way to do it with the axe, you just haven't figured it out yet. Uh, I mean, there's one boss that you can use one half of their health I'm bar. just waiting for you to tell me how you beat the dragon with an axe. The dragon? Yeah, the endless dragon at the end where you get the dragon tear from him. Oh, okay, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can't. No, I know you me. can't, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to tell me how you beat him with a fucking axe next. So, this guy is, uh... Well, I mean... You do need him for a quest that gives you a unique Jizo statue, but it does the exact same thing as the other ones, it's just his one. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, again, all these NPC quests are super fucking irrelevant uh, for the most part, but his is a little bit in like more interesting compared to the rest of them at least. So, boss here, again, super easy as long as you have the axe, you can make sure you get the drop on him, take a health bar off him. You could also like drop down and backstab, but whatever. And then it is the uh, the standard R1, R2 fair until he is dead. <laughs> and it, you know, the crazy thing is, is like it knocks them out of their attacks. Uh, it's so funny because when you time this right, he does a kick attack and you like dodge under it because of some like hitbox porn. It's fucking amazing. And I mean, I know for a fact that these guys can, I mean, we had such Man, spent, a hard time. I spent so long learning how to fight <laughs> yeah, this guy. I like, I was like, okay, when he's gonna do that, I can jump over his head and land the Ichimonji. Like, I, I learned, I was doing shit like, oh, I can just wall jump to leap over his entire combo and shit. Like, that's how I'd avoid that. No, you just come in, you go, what combo? Axe, sword, <laughs> axe, sword, axe, sword. <laughs> Fuck it. <coughs> so there's a boss here that you don't want to fight yet, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no, He'll just destroy you. We don't we do not do the Shichiman Warriors or the Headlesses until uh, after Mibu Village. So, I uh, quite a bit further into the game. But was, did you get six skill points sitting there just because you went Axe R1, Axe R1 on two dudes? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Now, again, you know, we're, like, being kind of conservative of when we're uh, burning our skill points just because it's, like, you know, lets you catch up in case you die every now and then again if you want to know what skills we have look into further episodes scroll through until you see the screen and then you can like see what it is we've got and you can buy like buy ahead of time do you know what i mean like so many comments we go oh, uh, what should i level up next or what skill should i get next just look at the next video bro <laughs> just or you have the axe and the sword it doesn't matter and for the most part a lot like it almost doesn't matter there's like skills that are like beneficial to have but it's not the biggest deal i personally recommend the entire ichimonji skill page like yeah. the ashina arts or something it's called i can't remember the one that gives you ichimonji and it gives you all the passive posture and extra posture damage and stuff like that can't go wrong investing in that stuff if you're not sure where to spend your points you there's also ones that like isn't there points you can spend in that increases your heal from the gourd and shit like that as well or something? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, but we've already there's, got that one. So. There's loads of passive things that you can invest in if you don't want to take any active ones. But because you've got you, you, the only active one you needed was Fang and Blade. Yeah, so I guess Fang and Blade is like kind of required, I suppose. But you, you know, got that. but then you also need the skills like before Fang and Blade, yada yada yada. Yeah, so just invest in whatever you like. So we are. Gonna pick up mid-air combat arts just now, and then we're gonna Which get... is just the, one of the best skills in the game if you use Ichimonji all the time. And then uh, mid-air prosthetic tools. It uh, just means you can get like a mid-air axe attack. Um... <laughs> so then you can axe R1, leap over the unblockable, stomp on his head, axe fang and blade yeah. on the way down. A nice, probably instant posture-like <laughs> build. If you'd done that to Seven Spears, it probably would have killed him immediately. So I'm not sure what uh, thing we get next. Maybe we, because uh, I, I, I've got like guide notes, it's been a while, so. But partly we get the suppressed power. You need that to upgrade Makiri counter again. Um, you know, it doesn't even, we don't even upgrade the Makiri counter. It's like, it's just irrelevant. 
You should though, because it, it does like 10% more posture. But anyway, so I, again, uh, just to make a point, um, you should be watching all these videos in sequence all the way through, uh, just so you don't miss anything. And if there's any updates, we'll put them in the comments. But I guess I'll have this in like two screens flashing up before every guy, just to make sure. But anyway, aye, we are going to uh, leave that part there. And the next part is... Oh, uh, the, 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 the